if I attack the corner like that, then maybe I can speed up with the... Oh, I don't know how to get faster at sim racing! Tom, Tom, what are you doing? We gotta do the new Nitro Nights episode. But I, I'm so annoyed, I can't get any faster at sim racing. I'm... It's annoying! Calm down, Tom. We have sim racing academies as a topic today. Oh, well, why didn't you say that would be so helpful? Let's start the show! Hey, what's happening? So glad you could join us for a packed Nitro Nights episode. Today, our guest is Mac Backham. He is going to be joining us and he's going to be taking on the hot lap challenge set by Ben Constanturis. Can he beat it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Plus, we'll be talking about the topic, Sim Racing Academies. That is all on the way, plus so much more. But in the meantime, let's get straight to it and find out about today's guest. 27-year-old Mac Backham only knows one way of doing things. Full steam ahead. Synod. Since his early 20s, he's been proving his skills in iRacing. After competing for Radicals Online, the Dutchman joined Coanda Simsport in 2016. Today, he even lives in their team house in northern Germany. And as a hobby cook, he cooks for the whole house. Podium finishes are nothing new to Mac, who is a frequent winner of the iRacing 24 hour Le Mans LMP races. The Dutch driver even competed in this year's virtual edition of Le Mans. And even though his favorite color is pink, he's never managed to win a race in a pink car. Outside of endurance races, you'll probably find him as an instructor in the virtual racing school or also as a competitor in the Porsche Tag Heuer eSports Super Cup. Well, there you go. Everything you needed to know about Mac and he is joining us right now. On Nitro Nights, Mac Backham, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I've had a good night rest, uh, good chill day here, nice weather. I'm uh, perfect. Yeah, I love that. We, we got to know a little bit about you uh, living in the uh, sim racing team house, a bit of a hobby cook as well. Uh, everyone would want to know, is this a normal thing in the sim racing world to be living in a team house? Uh, I don't. I don't really think so. I think we're kind of the first... Uh, maybe even the complete first uh, to kind of do this. I think a few F1 esports team had kind of like a, a not really a team house, but more like a, uh, I guess, a team headquarters or something. But yeah, this is a very unique opportunity and uh, it's really, really cool living here. And I think it's, uh, maybe we will see it more in the future. But I think for now, I think we're kind of the only one doing it the way we're doing it now. Yeah, definitely. I, I do remember, actually, you reminded me, uh, Mercedes did do it uh, during the F1 Esports Pro Series. I know they did live together and they benefited from it. But what's it really like living with uh, your kind of your rivals, but teammates at the same time? Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, really. Like, it's really, really cool. I mean, I, I know uh, the people I live with. I've known them for a long time. Uh, Josh is a little bit newer, of course, because he joined the team a bit later. But Philip and Dave, for example, I've known um, for over four years now. Uh, I, speak to, I spoke to them almost every day uh, prior to living here anyway. Uh, same kind of goes for Josh anyway for the last year or so. So it's obviously really cool to live with your friends. Uh, but besides that, I think it adds a little bit of, um, yeah, maybe a bit of competitive drive. I, I feel like I'm already very competitive driven, but I think this kind of stepped it up a little bit. Even if you, if you do something wrong, you know, if I do something wrong in a race, like my last race didn't go so well, I will never live that down because every time at the dinner table, uh, I am reminded of my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. You've made some lovely food for them, but they're reminding you of what went wrong in the race. You're yeah. kind of living and breathing at sim racing. To a lot of people watching right now, they're thinking, oh, that sounds incredible. But what is it like when you're living and breathing it? Do you get any downtime to relax? Uh, well, you can kind of plan your own days a bit more freely than I guess if you would have a normal job. But in the end, this is this is something now that I do 24-7, 365. It's really, really difficult to, to kind of let go. You're always confronted with everything. And it is, of course, very fun. Uh, this is my hobby and this is also my job now. But at the same time, you you're, it's very difficult to kind of uh, get a rest from things because sometimes you maybe want to take a day off or something, but there's always something popping up in sim racing. It's always something new. And even though it might be small, I don't think I've ever really had a complete day off sim racing unless I was maybe going back to my parents for a weekend or something like that. That's incredible. Um, I have to ask because I've been watching your form and recently in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Um, what's that been like competing and, uh, and have you found it as demanding as it looks? 
Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been very tough, and uh, I'm I'm actually very disappointed, kind of, with the results I've had this year. Uh, I was already used to driving in the World Championship. I did that basically, uh, except for the year prior to this year. I drove in the World Championship for three years in a row or something, uh, even won a few races, and I was already with uh, really great drivers like Mitchell De Jong and Martin, and you know, practicing with them. So I kind of knew what it took, and uh, I was already very dedicated to this, but. The level of competition this year is so high and at the same time i feel like i've kind of let myself down a little bit not really extracting the pace that i show in practices uh in the actual race sessions which is obviously what matters in the end um so it's that's been a bit of a yeah negative side but other than that i've been really good to kind of develop myself again really pushing myself this hard in such a competitive field it's it's really kind of inspiring and motivating yeah, I mean, it's such a competitive field. And, and I imagine that Josh Rogers occasionally will be strutting around the team house, uh, you know, full of himself. But what do you do now, though? You, you, you mentioned your experience isn't quite where you want to be, and that's your level. But so, so what are you doing to, to counteract that? Uh, you mean to kind of improve even more, you think? Or Yeah. How, how can you improve when you're not quite where you need to be right now? Um, well, it's all about finding your weaknesses, really. I think it's just analyzing what you're doing wrong and also doing, what, uh, also seeing what you're doing right. I think that's maybe even the most important thing. So you really know what to kind of focus on. And I think for me, for example, this season, just taking it as from my own view, I feel like in practice I've been really competitive. I'm definitely not as fast as Josh. Uh, he's way, way too far ahead for anyone, really. But if in when I compare my practice data to my race data with him, there is such a distinct difference. And I feel like for me, it's mostly about getting uh, the best out of myself under high pressure situations. So now I'm kind of looking at things outside of sim racing to kind of help me uh, focus a bit more and, you know, really keeping my attention to what it needs to be. So doing stuff like meditation and, you know, things like that. I'm, it's something I'm looking into to kind of improve from there. So it's not always about the physical stuff, like the pedal inputs and everything, but it's also a big mental uh, block some, every now and then. Yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, Mac, I wish you all the best moving forward with that. It sounds like you've got the right mind space uh, to do just that. But have you got the right mind space for the quick fire questions? Uh, we're changing things up. Are you ready for these fast questions? Uh, I hope so. I have no choice, do I? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is very key. You do not have a choice in this. So first question, <clears throat> as fast as you can. Uh, favorite racing game? I racing. Favorite driver? Uh. Ricciardo. Favorite car? Uh, the RSR. Favorite race you have driven? Suzuka 2018 in the F1 car in the World Championship. Endurance races or racing leagues? Endurance races. Trying to get better on your own or using a driving school? Uh, using a driving school. Okay, I was wondering where you were going to go with that answer. That is your quick fire questions done uh, because we went, hadn't rehearsed this, but this leads perfectly because you are the man to talk about that. But in the meantime, uh, this should give you everything you need to know about sim racing academies and driving schools. For many sim racing enthusiasts, the time will come when they can no longer improve on their own. If you belong to that group, there's nothing to worry about. If you're not ready to give up on your dream of dominating the servers out there, a Sim Racing Academy program might be exactly what you need. For example, the Virtual Racing School, or VRS for short, features many free useful driving tutorials on YouTube and on their website. There's currently 47 coaches such as iRacing legends Martin Kunka, Mitchell de Young, as well as eNASCAR top stay Ray Alfala, who analyze replays and explain a variety of maneuvers and situations. VRS's basic service is completely free and contains a driving data storage to cloud store and analyze racing data. Special downloadable data packs provided by the coaches ensure that you drive under the same setup and conditions as they do. The Coach Dave Academy by David Perel is focused on Assetto Corsa Competizione. Alongside Perel, GT3 driver Jordan Pepper plus GT3 and Formula 3 star Kelvin van der Linde provide one-to-one -one coaching for different topics. Each session costs a minimum of 120 US dollars, but lets you analyze your driving and identify weaknesses you need to work on. The so-called SimGrid provides a first step into competitive racing with different series in an educational environment. You can also purchase track maps, even for other games such as Gran Turismo. 
The Porsche racing experience has transformed its concept in the digital world and offers professional sim racing training. Originally created as an additional offering for real racers, all lectures are now open to sim racing newcomers as well. Those are held by the same instructors as at the Real Experience Center. Driving instructions over Discord and track knowledge, as well as first-hand racing experience, all combine to create the full experience of a racing weekend using the original Assetto Corsa. Regardless of the game, Sim Racing Academies can help ensure Sim Racing's next hero generation develop. If you want to be a part of it, you should really consider giving it a try. Fascinating stuff there. The bright future of sim racing and with the opportunity to have a sim racing academy. Now, I know Mac is still with us. Mac, uh, you're part of a coach uh, in a virtual uh, school. Um, so who better to ask? Uh, what is it like being a coach and, and how did that come about for you? Yeah, well, first of all, I think it's really cool that you're able to kind of help people and uh, kind of maybe carry your passion over a little bit. Obviously, the people you coach also will definitely already have a passion for it. Otherwise, I don't think you would go as far as maybe getting coaching. Uh, and yeah, how it came about. Um, I basically joined Quanda Sim Sports and Virtual Racing School is basically our partner or sponsor. Uh, also at that time, it was, I think, three and a half years ago. And some openings came up. Uh, I expressed interest early already. Like, hey, I want to become a coach. I feel like I, you know, I'm good at this. I can help people with this. And uh, yeah, when the opening came up, a few more data packs came up, uh, people needed a little more time for their own stuff. I was able to jump in, take some of that time away from people and then uh, kind of grew from there. That's amazing. I mean, and what are the clients like that you work with? What's their skill level? Are they all a complete beginner or are, are they somewhere along in their, in their sim racing career? It's, it, complete, it varies so much. Uh, you ha I have people that have been sim racing for maybe years uh, that are still quite a bit of the pace. They make very, let's say, simple general mistakes quite a lot, or they have uh, bad habits. I also have people that are extremely fast. They're very close to the data pack lap times. I've even had to coach people that were faster than some of the data pack uh, lap times. So it's, it really varies. You, you meet all kinds of people at all kinds of pace um, from all over the world. Yeah, it must be so fun to see their progression as well when you work with them. Uh, but has it ever crossed your mind, Mac, uh, when you're watching them drive, you think, hang on a minute, I might be helping one of my future rivals. Has that ever crossed your mind? Um, well, it, I wouldn't say it crossed my mind. Maybe it has, but it actually already happens, sort of, I think. Um, basically, when I was doing the Pro Series uh, to get into Porsche Esports uh, Super Cup, uh, I got a coaching request from someone also driving in the Pro Series. And uh, yeah, we just... I basically coached him. We did laps together. We worked on what he wanted to work on. And uh, he's now actually in front of me in the standings in the season this year. So uh, I think he's managed quite well. No way. Uh, I feel it yeah. would be bad form if I asked you who that driver was. Uh, so I'll let you be the proper coach and you can decide if you want to say or not. Um, but how do you integrate uh, the lessons into your personal timescale? Because we heard earlier, uh, you know, you, you very rarely take a day off. So how do you fit it all in? Um, yeah, it's, 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 I usually plan it at least a week beforehand because I get a request. Uh, I kind of already do my schedule week by week, so I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I will maybe make like a block, like I want to do coaching here. And then, of course, it also depends if uh, the student is available at that time because I get requests from all over the world. So sometimes you also have a mismatch in time zone. For example, if someone from Australia or somewhere else in Asia you know, request coaching, you kind of have to meet in the middle a little bit because my evening would be in his night or something like that. So I usually plan that about a week out. Um, so I really know when it is and I don't have any other distractions from it and I can fully focus on doing that coaching uh, session at that time. Yeah. Uh, now, just getting the general vibe of you, Mac, you seem very calm and relaxed. Do you ever become a strict coach? <laughs> it kind of depends on the person, I think. I think in, in general, I'm quite easygoing with people. Uh, obviously, normally the students are also very easygoing. They're there to learn. And I mean, you don't pay for coaching in generally if you don't want to learn, you know. So I think in general, when I try to explain something, they're very, uh, yeah, they're listening quite to, to quite a lot of detail. They really try to soak up the information as much as they can. So I don't think uh, being strict is needed too much. But yeah, sometimes there's a bit of frustration from people. Um, they're, they find it hard to see things maybe not willing to admit some mistakes they make and then you have to power through a little bit. I'm not going to yell at them or anything, but sometimes it, it has to be clear, you know, that, uh, you know, there's things to improve on and if you can't see them yourself, then you will never improve on them. 
And um, I've got to ask Matt, just it, it, very briefly, what is the number one common mistake that people make that you would say is a common one that you have to say, hey, if you do this, you'll improve? Ooh, I would, it, it kind of varies. I think for people who are uh, quite a bit further off than, let's say, general data pack lap times, I would say it's mostly about racing line. And that's mostly from not using the full width of the track either on entry or exit. I think that's the most common thing we, we encounter and that that's just a habit throughout the whole track. Okay, well, listen, perfect. Uh, Mac, uh, listen, I don't know if you have much coaching experience in track mania or you've played much of track mania <laughs> because you are about to take part in the hot lap. Ben Constanduras set a time of 58.83 seconds to get round at track mania in the hot lap. How are you feeling going into this challenge? Uh, I must say I'm a little nervous. I, this is the first time I played Trackmania. And uh, as I said earlier, I was I was kind of hoping I would be the first one to set a time so I wouldn't be lost. But, you know, uh, I'll take it head on. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you make it 58 seconds on the nose, then listen, you'll be top of the leaderboard. And so far, there would only be two people. So listen, I reckon you can do this. Best of luck, Mac. I'm so excited about this. It is the Nitro Nights Hot Lap featuring Mac Backham. He has 58.83 seconds to beat Ben Constantinus. Can he do it? Well, it's time to find out. Mac, when you are ready, three, two, one, go for it. All right, let's go. Oof, this is nerve wracking. <laughs> no pressure. All right, here we go. Oof. Oh, damn. Oh, that damn it quickly. Should I go again? Well, that seems like Whoa. a good line. This is a yeah, good start, man. Good. good start. Now, always advisable to me avoid these pillars. No. You're getting some good speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is, this is the worst thing I've ever done. You're going to have to put your foot down here, yeah. Mac. But that's what we like oh, to I see in the hot there. lap. Smiling and laughing. It could me. be out of fear and nerves, but this is going okay so far. Oh, uh, you jinxed me. Feel like it's going to be very close. Oh. This. Ah, I feel like uh, Ben's got me. Yeah. Ah, that's painful. That's oh, painful again. Mac, I don't know what happened there. One minute three. Uh, it was because of that crash early on. Uh, how did you find it? That was horrible. That that crash. That was uh, just took all the momentum out of the car and downwards from there. <laughs> Well, listen, man, you were valiant. It was your time to shine. It didn't necessarily quite happen. However, it is now time for our viewers to shine in the social showroom. Now, I love it in the social showroom. When I get to champion a winner, and we have a winner in the winner of Clash of Racers. Uh, this is Harmonic. This is what he won. It is the AOC Gaming Monitor. That is very sweet indeed. So... We start by getting to champion someone in the community. Now, next up, uh, we asked you guys, listen, if you're getting into sim racing, recommendations for maybe game, platform, setup, loads of you got in touch with this. Uh, now, I picked one out here. This is Badgerman at uh, Austin. He says, start cheap um, and slowly. Either get the F1 2020, platform doesn't matter, or GT Sport if you have a PS4, or Forza 7 if they have an Xbox or PC with a controller. You can always upgrade over time. Love that answer. So thank you very much for that. Uh, what would you say, Mac, in terms of uh, someone wants to get into sim racing? Uh, what game, what platform, what setup should they go for? I mean, it honestly depends on your budget. And if you already know that you like it, like, you know, if you really like lay racing games, you're definitely going to like sim racing. So uh, I think where I started is F1, the F1 games. I think that's a pretty basic, you know, um, yeah, like say entry level to serious racing. And then just go from there. You know, you can always make it more expensive. You can make it as cheap or expensive as you want, really. So uh, I think the F1 game is a good uh, place to start.
Oh, perfect. Good advice there from Mac. Um, listen, when we talk about expensive and inexpensive, um, sim racing does get that question added to it. Is it too expensive? So we said to you guys, is it expensive for the casuals? Now, um, Brian uh, Lockwood got involved with this one um, and said uh, he got a P5 in the World Championship with this rig. And as you can see there, it's, it's, a, it's a decent setup. Um, and the more expensive the regular gaming, he says yes, but more immersive and realistic too. So loving that setup from Brian. He got involved with this. And also Christian J. Uh, Burnt uh, Mac uh, said this uh, about the whole setup. Start with cheap um, and build up. However, um, you're as fast with a cheap setup. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that's kind of what, what we all did. It's kind of what I alluded to before with the F1 game. It could be something else, of course, as well, like R-Factor. You just basically start doing it with some basic equipment. I think that's what we all did, all like serious sim racers. And then you find out, oh, I really love this. I do this every day, you know, I do this every evening. Why not invest a bit more money if I have it anyway? Because I use it so often, it's a good investment. Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, Mac, uh, that is the social showroom done and dusted for this week. Uh, thanks for your input on that. Uh, thank you so much for taking part in the hot lap. I think we need to discuss that a little bit more. You have been a brilliant guest. I'm hoping to get you back on again as soon as possible. Uh, first of all, have you enjoyed yourself? And did you enjoy the hot lap? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, uh, first of all. And uh, yeah, the hot lap was fun, but it's also, you know, uh, I'd hurt a little bit having that crash and then not uh, finishing ahead of Ben, you know, but, uh, you know, the stuff like that happens. So if you have me on again, I'll gladly do the hot lap again. Definitely. That is the spirit. Commiserations. However, uh, the thing is, I can tell you, Mac, you are second in the leaderboard now. <laughs> Out of two. Oh, well, it's a podium. It's a podium. <laughs> <laughs> you have made it onto the podium. Listen, Mac, thank you so much for being part of the show. I'll say goodbye to you. Thank you for being a part of the Nitro Knights and best of luck for the rest of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Yeah, thank you guys and uh, thanks for having me again. So there you go. Uh, Mac, uh, out of the building now, Nitro Knights. He, as you know, will be going back into the sim race, practicing and getting ready for the next competition. In the meantime, though, a week has passed since we had the news flash. So let's get everybody up to speed. Ah, you've been expecting the news flash. Well, the news flash is what you will get, and I will bring it to you in a podium size update starting at three. F1 Esports Series is back. Yes. Formula One has announced the return of the F1 eSports series. It will be held from October to December. The pro draft has already been done behind closed doors and all results will be revealed in a dedicated show on August the 27th. It will be the fourth season of the series and this time with a $750,000 prize pool. I wonder who will be hosting it. It's me. Uh, in at two on the podium, Red Bull joins V10 League. Uh, Red Bull Racing is joining the newly founded V10R League. Red Bull is the sixth contender in the new $100,000 series after the other team, Yas Heat, joined. Yas Heat is born in a cooperation between Abu Dhabi Motorsport and Veloce Esports. Community darling Yadir was named brand ambassador and driver for Yas Heat. Now, check this out. After that was announced, he made a P9 to P1 wonder drive in the A. ACR series. Well done to him, a former guest. Make sure you go and check that out. He said after the race, never give up and never surrender in the race. Beautiful words. And finally, in at number one, the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. The sixth round was at Brands Hatch. First up was the sprint, which was won by Alejandro Sanchez. He made the most of the very few chances you get overtaking uh, from the offerings of Brands Hatch. Uh, current champion, Joss Rogers, made it P1 in the final race and shortened his distance to leader, Sebastian Job. That was after defending hard against Sanchez when both met the grass. Job still leads by 18 points going into round seven. That is your update done and dusted. You're welcome. Well, that brings a fabulous Nitro Nights episode to a close. To be honest with you, I'm feeling a bit emotional, but I shouldn't feel that emotional because we'll be back next week. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and follow us on Twitter at overtake underscore GG. Until then, Buckle up. <laughs>